Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, B. New. I'm coming at you on this Tuesday. And first and foremost, as always, want to send out positive vibrations and blessings to anybody who could be listening. Now, with all that being said, we all know that the Los Angeles Lakers will be in action on tonight uh, at home, taking on none other than the Memphis Grizzlies. And the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, you know, have not been looking too good this season. We all know that John Morant is still sitting out for that, I believe, what is a 20 five game suspension we won't get into all the ins and outs of that we all know by now why that is the case but fortunately for the los angeles lakers he won't be in the lineup so with that being said i would imagine that the lakers will be able to get a victory on tonight and it is a part of the in season play in uh play the in season tournament for the nba so hey i think lebron james might give it a go because he's already said he wants that half a milli uh you know i think he will give it a go tonight although he did sit out the last game against portland i think he was listed as questionable but was upgraded to i don't know if it was probable or either a game time decision but we shall soon see i'm sure there will be updates later on throughout the day but either way anthony davis and company were able to take care of the portland trail blazers the other night as we saw on sunday night and i would imagine without the services of a stephen adams as well and i do believe brandon clark is injured uh and tillman is a game time decision so uh, Anthony Davis, this should be a game where he should easily be able to go out and dominate because without Steven Adams, there is going to be nobody who can really defend Anthony Davis if he decides he wants to be aggressive like he was last game and get down into the block. And with that being said, LeBron James might nurse that calf injury just a little bit longer just so he doesn't re-injure to give it a little bit more rest because for him, of course, it is all about victory. So, you know, at the end of the day, if it was a playoff situation, I'm sure he would be giving it a go. But sometimes you just need to take all the the precautionary measures but you know another thing that i would like to talk about other than the matchup tonight with the memphis grizzlies and the lakers is that of the lakers and what they've been looking like so far this season and do they truly have an opportunity to hoist the 18th banner in the crypto.com arena and uh get lebron james his fifth ring i personally think at the last season them getting to the western conference finals that things would be a lot better this year of course the lakers still have not been whole we do know they made some off-season moves in the acquisitions of that of christian wood and of gabe vincent uh gabe vincent we have not really seen him get a chance to have an opportunity to play a whole lot yet this season because he has been injured uh his perimeter defense is missed not saying he's a great uh defender but i would say he's better than what we have currently as far as the guard play because we all know d'angelo russell couldn't defend his way out of a wet paper sack uh, even though he's trying to get better and get stronger for the offseason but at the end of the day uh you know i just feel like gabe vincent out of the back out of the lakers backcourt is probably the best perimeter defender and of course the lakers are missing pando because of his uh skill set of being able to guard positions one through four and sometimes even five is that Vando we saw him guard Steph Curry in the playoffs uh, we saw him even on John Moran on times in the playoffs and if he can guard smaller guards like that just imagine the pressure that he can put on opposing defenses and of course where the Lakers have been lacking and that of rebounds and now you know with Vando coming back into the fold you would see that the Lakers rebounding would pick up now with all that being said Vando has been cleared to start performing exercises and conditioning to get back on the court so with that being said typically when you see a player being cleared for contact and things of that nature to get back on the court then what you see is a week and a half to two weeks before they actually make a comeback hopefully it'll be sooner for him uh, i wonder if he's been able to do any cardio because that was a heel injury so he probably had to stay off his feet so you still want to get into game conditioning you know he did unfortunately had that injury at the beginning of the preseason so you know not sure how, what his conditioning was like in camp and things of that nature when he came into camp. So, but the addition of Jared Vanderbilt back to the lineup is going to be a huge boost in the arm for the Lakers. There's a reason why they signed that man to an extension. And I think that was a great pickup by the Lakers because he proved what he was worth last year and he's been working on that jumper. So, a lot of people say he was much of an offensive liability, but me myself personally, I think what he make what he lacks on offense, he makes up for on the defensive end because one through five doesn't necessarily have to score. You got to have somebody in there to do the dirty work. And if you think of some of the great championship teams over the years, there was always somebody to do the dirty work, whether it was Rodman with the Pistons or even 
Rodman with the Bulls, or you know, you just had Artest, you know, with the Lakers, Metal World Peace, or whatnot, even uh, with the Heat teams, Haslam, you know, just got some player that has that grit, some player who has that mentality of saying, hey, I'm gonna go out like a battier for the Heat fans. It's, you know, somebody like that, you know, the Lakers made a mistake with the acquisition of Westbrook by spending too much money trying to get a third star. You really just need to get great role players who can step up and take some of these things off of your star players. You understand what I'm saying? So they don't have to do as much. But if the Lakers are going to improve, they're going to have to do better from the three-point shooting. Uh, you thought with the addition of these players that they would get better. Like Gabe Vincent last year, for instance, Gabe Vincent was 38% shooter last year. This year so far, he shot one out of 14 from three, which is horrendous. So we'd expect for those numbers to improve gradually over time to get him back at at least at his career range with 35, 36% three point shooter. And then you got D'Lo who was 41% last year, who actually was shooting it pretty good from deep last year. One of the few things that he does do well. And this year so far, he is shooting 29%, which is not very good actually terrible uh from as far as an nba standard is concerned and then uh you got prince who was a 37 percent career three-point shooter this year he's shooting 31 percent you know max christie who shot 42 percent from three in the limited opportunities that he had on last year and this year he shot one out of ten from three a measly 10 percent <laughs> that is terrible uh then you know the the overall lakers you know as far as entrepreneur Vanderbilt, I mean, uh, Atchimura, LeBron, and company, they've pretty much shot what they've expected to shoot. Now, Reeves, I think he shot 40% last year, and he down to like 31 or 32%. So these numbers, I hope, gradually improve, and then the Lakers could see, uh, you know, just some improvement on the offensive side of the ball. I think they have established a defensive identity, and they're going to do better. I think what the Lakers need to do is kind of go back to what they were doing last year on the offensive end and do more of a spread pick and roll to where they're clearing out one side of the court and letting their two best players operate in a pick and roll. And then you can still have, you know, pick and roll action, pick and pop action. And then, of course, always kicking it to the weak side three, depending on where the help's coming from, depending on, you know, what the other team, what the opponent decides to do defensively, whether they're blitzing on the pick and roll or switching uh, on the pick and rolls. Like like uh, I believe Phoenix was doing the other night, uh, switching on the pick and rolls. And a lot of teams elect to do that, just depending on the personnel, maybe not one through five, but depending on what type of pick and roll that you're setting. And I think LeBron, when he and AD are in the pick and roll, that is, uh, you know, an advantage for them because now you have a four and a five pick and roll. So now you're gonna get LeBron either switched onto a bigger person who he can blow by, you know, from the perimeter, uh, you know, and that's just going to bode well for the Lakers. So that's something that we want to see. But at the end of the day, you know, the Lakers are just going to have to shoot better. And one statistic that I found that was very interesting was, you know, the Lakers just haven't been generating quality enough threes and they haven't been making quality threes. And there's a particular stat that you can look up and see that, uh, you know, on for wide open threes, uh, they get Lakers basically get 13 wide open threes per game. And a wide open three means there's not a defender within at least six feet of you. And out of wide open threes, the Lakers rank 29th in the league. 29th, which is damn near at the bottom. You're basically at the bottom of the league and making wide open threes. So, you know, true to their form, they haven't been taking a lot of threes, which last year I got upset because a lot of times they just tried to outshoot their opponent, which was not their strong suit, especially beginning early on in the season. We all know horrendous, how horrendous they were from the three-point line until they changed up some personnel. But Achimura, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but Achimura actually shot the highest percentage from three during the playoffs. And I know a lot of that was during the Grizzly series when, you know, he got pretty hot in like two or three games in a row where he was hitting like six out of seven threes. So I'm pretty sure that helped it. But if given an opportunity, I think he can get back true to form. And one thing about Achimura, I think he had a great offseason. I think the beginning of the season just started off a little bumpy because of the injury then he was forced to miss four games i believe it was due to the eye contusion and the concussion protocol which uh kind of threw his rhythm off and then he got buried back in the lineup because you have cam reddish starting to play well and torian prince who came on but i would particularly like to see achimura uh in the starting lineup and of course until vando comes back and then maybe put vando in that starting lineup but the Lakers need to use their length. And if you look at their win share and, and, and what they're doing statistically when it comes to uh, when they have 
two bigs on the floor, whether it's Christian Woods and Anthony Davis at the same time, whether it's uh, Anthony Davis and uh, whether it's Anthony Davis and uh, Jackson Hayes at the same time, or whatever it is, then that's what the Lakers need to do. And I apologize because this car, I think, was trying to rear end your boy. I really don't know what's going on there. But at the end of the day, man, I got to be careful out here. You understand what I'm saying? But, man, I just want to come to y'all really quickly because I said throughout the season I'm going to try to come every single day and give some sort of update and some kind of Lakers discussion. I do got some things I want to talk about that has been trending as of late, and I will get to that maybe on tomorrow. We'll throw that into tomorrow's show when we talk about uh, the reaction from tonight's game. And of course, as the season goes on and we start to get more viewers uh, from the uh, season just picking up pace, because you know, a lot of people don't even join us until after Christmas, but us true NBA fans, we already here, uh, especially with the NFL right now. I mean, my Titans not looking too good, so we're not going to talk about that. But at the end of the day, man, much love to everybody who joined me. Uh, if you haven't done so already, hit that like, hit that share, hit that subscribe. Man, I'm about to have some real clean stuff on the store, man. I got something in store for y'all, so pay no attention to what's in that store now because I know it's kind of bogus, but your boy's about to come with something that you're really going to like. So with all that being said, man, this has been your boy, Be New. I just want to say right on to the real and much love to these haters. I'm out.